It would seem 240Hz doesn't suffice for AOC. Indeed, the AG274FZ is a 260Hz Full HD IPS panel. Now, in its review, you're going to see if it's actually worth its price tag because in the UK it can be found for a whopping £390. Now, jumping straight in, we're going to talk about hardcore competitive gaming. Of course, that's where the monitor is poised towards. Now, first off, we have to talk about input lag, and here I had absolutely no complaints whatsoever. All my mouse clicks were very much responding on the monitor and had no problems whatsoever while playing some Counter-Strike bits against some bots or indeed playing some Deathmatch or some competitive CSGO. Now as for its response time, it's a little bit of a hard one to pin down, but let me share you my experiences. Now first off, through the OST you've got a few different overdrive modes to select. You've got off, weak, medium, strong, and then you have got boost mode. Now the boost mode is only enabled and only shows up through the OST when you disable AMD FreeSync and or G-Sync through the OST itself, and therefore you will have access to this boost mode. There is also MBR mode which also can be enabled if you so wish but this will also limit the peak brightness. We'll talk about peak brightness further down in this review in the image quality section so do keep tuned for that. But when it comes to gaming, here the boost mode overdrive just felt a little bit too dim and likewise in terms of its maximum MBR setting. But of course your mind may vary, you might actually prefer to do that if you're gaming in a completely pitch black room. Nevertheless, for me, I was running on its strong mode overdrive setting and here playing a game like Counter-Strike, I noticed a little bit of inverse ghosting. It wasn't to the point where it was throwing off my shots and therefore meant the game was unplayable, specifically given the fact that CSGO is a bit of a potato looking game but nevertheless here I was perfectly fine running in its highest overdrive mode again strong not the boost mode however if you go on to a game like Destiny 2 or a more visually appealing game here you'll find that the highest overdrive mode in other words the strong mode setting it just results in a bit too much inverse ghosting and that can be pretty much noticeable as such you'll probably want to dial it down to the medium overdrive setting instead and here you'll get a much more visually appealing experience so it really depends in terms of the game that you're playing, but let's say you're a hardcore competitive gamer, all I'm suggesting over here to get the best out of the monitor and thus the lowest response time, dial it on its strong overdrive and here you'll be fine with the amount of overshoot ghosting because the game is probably not that visually appealing. Now moving swiftly on, it is of course worth bearing in mind that this monitor runs up to 260Hz. You can select 240Hz if you so wish, and no I didn't notice a massive difference in terms of the overshoot ghosting, dialing it down to 240Hz. You do have, of course, 144Hz or 60Hz to select from, but of course this is a monitor with a high refresh rate and as such, if you're a PC gamer, there's no point in dialing it down or indeed paying the premium for such monitor. All I'm trying to say over here is that you'll want to make sure that your CPU and or GPU can output over 260Hz at Full HD because, well, that's what you're really paying for. Now, I did touch upon Destiny 2 and I should mention over here that the monitor does have Display HDR 400, which I do think is a little bit silly in terms of of an inclusion but in other words it does accept an HDR signal and goes over 400 nits which is definitely pleasing but it's nothing really to shout about I think HDR 400 is a little bit pointless in the grand scheme of things now nevertheless over here I was able to run the Nvidia G-Sync alongside 260 Hertz at full HD with HDR all simultaneously running while playing Destiny 2 I had no problems whatsoever in this department so here yes indeed you can run Nvidia Nvidia G-Sync on this monitor because it's a G-Sync compatible monitor. Now there's a difference over here, it's not a G-Sync module monitor, in other words it doesn't have G-Sync technology built into the monitor and as such you don't have the wide degree of the VRR range. Here it will go from 48Hz up to 260Hz, so therefore you don't have the full VRR range that you would get if this was a G-Sync module monitor. And yes, do not worry if you've got an AMD GPU instead, of course you can benefit from the FreeSync technology and yet again you'll get a tear-free gaming experience which will definitely be suitable for more casual gaming. Now moving on we get onto image quality and here the monitor is seriously impressive. It's got a 27 inch form factor and an IPS panel and put across my data color Spider X Elite, I recorded a 95.5% sRGB gamut coverage and 95.8% gamut volume. You can see here how it compares to the sRGB standard. As for color accuracy, it hit a staggeringly low 0.65 average delta E and a maximum of 2.9 with a contrast ratio of 1050 to 1. Now it's worth bearing in mind for you to achieve these fantastic results, you have to run in terms of its sRGB mode through the OSD. Without that, say for example if you go on the warm mode, the 
the sRGB color accuracy unsurprisingly drops. Here I had the gamut coverage at 95.9% and the gamut volume exceeding it at 111.9%. Again, here you can see how it compares to the sRGB standard. But when it comes to color accuracy, it drops to 1.83 average delta E with a maximum of 6.83. But on the plus side, contrast ratio goes up to 1147 to 1. Ultimately, what I'm trying to say over here, gamers should probably use the warm mode because it doesn't limit the peak brightness. But for those people who want to do any color work and also are gamers, then you'll probably want to resort to using the OSD in order to, to turn it to its sRGB mode and therefore get the best and most color accurate reproduction. Now I did touch upon the peak brightness and indeed over here the monitor does surpass the 400 nit standard that's set by display HDR. Now here I did note a 417 nit in terms of peak brightness although this is limited to 213 nit when you're running in terms of sRGB mode. In terms of its minimum brightness in none of these modes so for example if you're running it on its warm mode here here will get down to 71 nits. If however you're running MBR in terms of its maximum level or you're running boost overdrive, it'll drop it down to as low as 47 nits, which in my opinion is a bit too dim, but some people will actually quite like that. Now moving on, I should also mention the brightness uniformity. And here of course it's quite panel lottery, but my monitor had a slight variation in terms of its left hand side. And as for backlight bleed, it's acceptable, but the IPS bleed is noticeable a little bit at the bottom right hand corner, at least on my panel. Is it going to be something that's going to be quite distracting when you're playing dark games? Not quite, not from my experience, but of course your mileage may vary if you really want basically no IPS bleed, well, you're not going to have to go for an IPS, you're going to have to look for a VA or potentially a TN panel instead. Now moving on to the monitor's OST, it can be accessed through a joystick button found behind the monitor and also through a little puck which is included within the package. Now on the OST menu itself, you've got the game settings and as I did reference these before, for example, MBR or let's say the overdrive boost mode will not be there if you have G-Sync enabled. Elsewhere, you'll probably always want to have low input lag enabled. In fact, I don't even see why the option is there but nevertheless and as for the quick switch LED that's to do with the LED light that resides around that puck that I just mentioned. Now luminance is of course due to your own ambient light conditions so for example you might want to adjust the brightness levels but the rest of the modes I'll probably leave them on standard and as for the image setup this is really when you have HDR in terms of an HDR signal you'll have a few different modes over here to select from but display HDR is the one you'll want to select and it's only available if you have an HDR signal passing through the monitor. Now as for the color setup I did reference this in terms of the color temperature where you've got the sRGB mode you'll probably want to select that if you want the most color accurate reproduction but gamers will probably want the warm mode because you can adjust the brightness levels you of course have got a user mode where you can adjust the RGB values as well now as for audio it's got two 5 watt speakers built into the monitor and I must say they're actually pretty impressive specifically when you use it simultaneously with the DTS sound and here you've got a few different EQs now I would never recommend running built-in monitor speakers for gaming because well you're not going to get a better experience over let's say a set of bookshelf speakers or indeed a DAC and headphones but nevertheless they are there for you to use if you so wish. Now as for light effects you can go into it and enable it or disable it and adjust the RGB values to your liking. Now this is to adjust the LED lights which are found underneath the monitor and behind the monitor but quite frankly I don't really see the point in it because well it doesn't really add much to it and plus on top of that you're not going to really see it because it's not strong enough such as let's say Philips Ambiglow. Now similarly over here if you were to go in the OSD and go into extra you'll also see the logo projection and this does indeed project the AOC or the Aegon logo underneath the monitor. Again, I think it's a little bit of a pointless inclusion and here I would just completely disable it. But of course, if you're an AOC fan, then you can have that enabled. Now, finally, in terms of its OST setup, it's pretty self-explanatory. The only thing you'll want to bear in mind over here is if you're running over DisplayPort, you'll definitely want to connect over via the 1.2 and 1.4 connection over here so that you get the maximum refresh rate and resolution. Now, moving on, we get onto design and the stand. Here, the monitor has a three-sided borderless design and the bottom bezel is not too obstructive either and it's got a cool little finish. As for the stand itself I do feel that it does protrude from the front of the monitor a bit too much. It seems like it's a bit of a 
oversized stand for what it is. Specifically given the fact we're looking at a 27 inch monitor over here, not a super ultra wide or anything like that. So in this respect, you'll probably want to measure and make sure that the stand does fit on terms of your desk, because here, if you do have a monitor riser, then you might have some issues. If you do have a flat desk, however, it's not gonna be an issue, but it's just something I thought to point out. Now on the subject of the stand, it offers full height, tilt, pivot, and of course, rotation. And in this respect, it does give you a quite sturdy feel. You can replace the stand if you so wish via Visa compatible stand. And therefore, if you want to mount it on a monitor arm, you won't have any problems in this department. And so this brings me on to my verdict. Would I recommend the AOC AG274FZ? Well, frankly, it does well across the board, but given its overall asking price of £390, it's quite hard to recommend, namely because it's not quite faultless. The HDR400 is a little bit laughable, and elsewhere, the inverse ghosting in terms of its strongest overdrive mode can be noticed in certain more graphically intense games. So as a result, if you don't need HDR and you don't mind dropping from a 27-inch form factor down to 24, consider looking at the AOC 24G2ZU instead. Indeed, this monitor runs a IPS panel and also 240Hz and gives you a phenomenal gaming experience. Elsewhere, you should look at the Asus VG279QM, which does offer HDR and also a superior gaming experience because in its strongest overdrive mode at 240Hz, it doesn't have any inverse ghosting. And as a result, these two monitors would be my top picks if you are a hardcore competitive gamer looking for a full HD 240Hz-ish monitor. So if you've liked this review and want to see more detailed independent reviews from the channel, definitely do drop a like and of course subscribe and hit that bell notification, all of which would be greatly appreciated. As such, I've been totally dubbed and I'll see you in the next one. Take care and goodbye.